What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel that is not Kiko, that is Rocky. That is the cat at our new Airbnb. And this is a rally cycle owned by the person that owns this Airbnb. Looks pretty vintage. So I was talking to him and asking him about how to buy a cycle over here and what kind of a cycle to buy because everybody's cycle keeps getting stolen or nicked or something happens and uh, what he was telling me is the first thing that you have to remember is do not buy a cool looking cycle. Anything that looks a little attractive is definitely going to get stolen. That was point number one. Point number two is when you're buying a cycle, make sure you buy a cycle with a handlebar that has a drop down handlebar, basically a handlebar like that, uh, where people find it a little more uh, not so convenient to ride on an everyday basis that has a lesser chance of getting stolen. Third, buy something that looks really, really, really old. In that way, it has an even less chance of getting stolen. So yeah, basically non-attractive, uncomfortable to ride and pretty tattered looking is what you're supposed to be looking for in the market. And you can buy them at uh, Facebook Marketplace or you can go to the Brick Street Market. Yeah, these are the two markets that are pretty decent to buy cycles. This is the new locality that we live in. Looks pretty damn sweet. This way. So this kind of architecture is basically called row houses. Mm -hmm. and, and do you know anything more about them? No. Okay. We're gonna find out sooner. <laughs> they look nice, that's for sure. Yeah. Very picturesque. There. Yeah. But hunting for houses is almost like uh, it's like really nerve wracking because we've been searching for a house and whew, it's a task. This paper is not there, that paper is not there. There is absolutely uh, a very slim line to walk to try to find a house over here. Okay, there's an easy approach to getting things done and then there is the local approach of getting things done. Yeah, we're trying out both. Oh, that is something that I definitely want. So that is something that I have never ever ever seen before. That's a lock for your disc brake. So basically if the bike lock fails and uh, all the other locks fail, that is what keeps your bike safe. This is amongst the biggest Tesco's. They even have a petrol bunk. Whoa. Check that out. It is massive. But we are actually here to go there. I'm so excited. Uh, we just come here to see what's there, not to buy anything. Um, we technically don't have a place to deck up or anything, but I'm very excited because uh, my brother has been to the IKEA in Hyderabad and he's talked so much about it. Um, the funny part is, I put him on to IKEA and um, I think he would have been there twice at least. So now I'm very excited to be here, finally, be part of the IKEA lovers. And that is the entrance. Ooh, fancy. Oh, I like the cot already. Check that out. The ground floor I think is only for parking. There must definitely be a basement as well. And that's for a better planet. Oh. Check out the interiors. That is so cool. So this is my first bite of a veggie dog here at an IKEA. So here goes. Oh. It's a good thing I added the extra relish in there. Packs a punch. 
Pretty tasty. Do you see the beginning of that compound wall somewhere here? And all the way till here is the gym. Good lord. If they give out like a per week uh, membership or something like that because I'm shifting houses all the time and they're moving from one part of the city to another part of the city all the time. It's insane. But I should start gymming pretty soon. Can't wait. So I'm actually out on a small walk trying to scout for places and hopefully some people that we can shoot. But it is interesting. I did get some nice shots of uh, the architecture in and around the place where I am staying. And it seems to be pretty interesting. I'm going to put that for you in a bit. But so far, so good. So today is going to be day three of making the same video. So I've only been shooting in uh, bits and pieces. And right now I am headed to the bank. I do have the documents that they require. I did get a letter finally. So that part of uh, the issue I think should be sorted out. And I hopefully manage to open a bank account by the end of this video. So let's see how it goes. So today is actually a pretty cold day and the winds are slightly on the higher side and I'm standing at a bus stop and I like the view, beautiful. So this is a prime example of the odd and even system over here. So you have 88, then you have 90, then you have 92 and then you have 94. So that is the even side of the road. And then on this side, you'd probably have all the odd numbers. That's a pretty house. So I'm in like a completely different part of the city right now. And I'm just about to enter the bank. Oh, this is exciting. And that is the bank that I need to go to. Lloyd's. This is going to sound like a little bit of a rant, but it is not. This is the most stupidest, stupidest, stupidest bank I have ever, ever, ever been to. All they require is an address proof and an ID proof. What document is more important than a person's passport, a person's visa and a person's BRP? You don't have this, they ask you for that. You don't have that, they, don't, they ask you for something else. And this is right now getting a little irritating because they are very, very rude as well. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Sorry if, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys just to give you a little bit of an indication about how tough it actually is over here. Because everybody thinks it's easy when you're sitting on the other side of things. But yeah. We'll figure that out. So I've written, uh, basically I needed to write a letter to a certain person and ask them to give me a valid ID. Like my passport documents were not good enough for an ID proof. It's very stupid. Absolutely stupid. So it's about 11.30 in the night right now. And I am running back home because it is drizzling. I love this place. 